Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to review Collins Chapter Five: Increasing the Efficiency of Instruction. Specifically, we're going to talk about the difference between effectiveness and efficiency in terms of instruction, and we'll talk about some ways in which observation learning can be facilitated. Throughout the semester, we have learned about different effective intervention strategies. If an intervention procedure is effective, then our student will acquire a new skill or behavior. We also need to think about this. There are ways to make instruction more efficient. Efficiency can be defined by several outcomes of instruction and can refer to how quickly a learner acquires new information in terms of the amount of time or the number of instructional sessions to criterion. Although all of the instructions or、uh, intervention strategies can be effective, some are slightly more efficient than others. For example, it takes less time to implement a procedure that uses a single prompt than it does to implement a procedure that uses a hierarchy of prompts. Efficiency can also refers to the number of errors learners make in responding with a procedure. Typically, we think that fewer errors a student makes. The more efficient a procedure is, because the instruction instructor will not have to spend time correcting errors. Here are some ways to increase efficiency. First way is to add non-targeted information, and second way is to conduct a small group format instruction rather than a one-to-one -one format. So when taught in a small group format. The instructor can teach more than one student at the same time, and each student can acquire skills by observing the instruction provided to other students of the group. The first way in which instruction can be more efficient is to expose students to content in addition to what already has been targeted for instruction. There are two ways to do this. The first is through adding content to the instructional trier, and the second is through facilitating observational learning. Non-targeted information can be edited to an instructional trier in three ways. First, it can be edited to the stimulus or task direction, so teacher can insert non-targeted information in addition to the content that has been targeted for instruction. Second, it can be edited when delivering a prompt. So you can add non-targeted information to the instructional trier you're currently using. So you can use the prompt system、uh, you're currently using to teach targeted information to teach non-targeted information. And third, it can be edited when providing a consequence or instructive feedback on performance. Non-targeted information presented in the consequence that follows a response is known as instructive feedback. So, when you ask question to teach targeted information, when student make correct response or incorrect response, you can provide instructive feedback. So, you can provide you can provide、uh, related or unrelated non-targeted information. So, you can expand students' knowledge repertoire. We all know the observation learning is an effective as well as efficient way of teaching. Observation learning occurs when learners acquire content through the observation of others. For example, when learners in a small group each have different content targeted for instruction during a lesson, each member of the group may acquire the information taught to the other members of the group, whether it is targeted or non-targeted. Teachers can facilitate this by ensuring that all learners are attending to each other as instructional triers are conducted. So, teacher may say, teacher may provide attentional cue by saying, "Everyone, look."
Many people just assume that individualized instruction, which means one-to-one -one format, is much more effective for children with disabilities than other formats. However, other formats such as small group instruction can be more effective in many educational situations. And small group instruction brings lots of advantages to learner as well as teachers. For example, learners in a small group can learn from observing each other. We just talk about the effects of observation learning, right? So learners in a small group have the opportunity to practice social skills and other skills as well. And teaching learners in a small group is an efficient use of the instructor time. For example, it, take, it takes less time to teach a lesson one time to six learners than to teach six separate lessons. So teaching learners in a small group requires fewer instructional personnel. If you consider to use small group instruction, you may need to consider several things, which includes the way in which the small group will be composed, the manner in which instructional procedures will be implemented, and the measurement and the evaluation procedures. Each small group can include one teacher with two to 10 learners. When you consider to use small group instruction, you can consider the way in which instruction will be organized. There are four options you can consider. First option is intra-sequential model. In this model, each learner receives one-to-one -one instruction within the group setting. So the teacher gives task directions to a group of learners and then rotate around the group giving feedback and working with each learner individually. The second model is called intersequential model. All learners in the group work together to perform a skill. Number three is tandem model. In this model, teacher begins instruction with a small number of learner, like two to three people, and slowly increases the size of the group over time. The last one is called one-to-one -one supplemental instruction. When teachers think that all learners are benefiting from small group instruction, but that one or two learners need additional instruction to acquire the contents of the small group lesson, teacher can provide one-to-one -one supplemental instruction to those students. Now we have to think about instructional procedures that will be used to teach content of the lesson in the small group. You may use instructional strategy we talked throughout the semesters, uh, such as constant time delay, graduate guidance, mostly prompting, uh, and simultaneous prompting procedures. You may use one or multiple instructional strategy for your students in the small group, but before you deliver those uh, strategy uh, in each session, make sure you provide attention or cue first. So you need to get uh, group's attention and each individual's attention before you deliver the task direction or prompt. And then you'll provide direction for the group, for the whole group and for each individual. Uh, regardless of manner in which instruction is structured, the instructor need to decide in advance how many instructor, instructional trier will be delivered to each learner in the group and how many instructional triers will uh, each learner will receive per turn. And you also need to consider where uh, and when you deliver uh, those instructions. Your textbook provides three basic trier formats for conducting instruction and now it's your turn to summarize that concept. So if you see page 75 of Colin's book, page 75, uh, you will see the three basic trier formats for conducting instruction. So uh, what you are going to do is download the in-class activity sheets and you are going to summarize these three sentences and you can submit it to Blackboard. 
Okay, after each instructional trial delivered in a small group lesson, it is very important for teacher to provide feedback as to whether the learner's responses were correct or incorrect. If the responses are not correct, then teacher must provide error correction, right? And uh, as with all instruction, data on the performance of learners in a small group format must be monitored and analyzed to make ongoing instructional decisions and to determine when criterion has been met. So please take a look at page 77, Sample Instructional Program 1, and page 80, Sample Instructional Program 2, so you'll be able to get some idea how to collect data uh, when you deliver a small group uh, instruction for, for the group and for each individual in the group.